So you can do your own warm up before this, but just to get more specific for what the workout is, shake out the arms and just gently start to put pressure onto both wrists. You're going to be using your shoulders, elbows, forearms, wrists quite a bit in this workout, so it's just important to get into them. And now you're going to drop down through press up and just play into the corners of the elbows, corners of the shoulders, corners of the wrists, just to open them up. Put the hands on the back, onto the back of your wrists, or walk that way, onto the tips of your toes, and just shake it out. So here we're going to walk on our knees between the two lines. This is really good for working on your hip mobility. When we have ankles and knees, we can often our hips can get lazy. Single out the hips by walking on the knees. And the knees are a lot stronger than we give them credit for. They're like two little shields on the bottom of our thighs. So go for a little walk on your knees, forwards and backwards. So now we're going to get into some crawling. But just to get used to the motion and get the coordination right, we're going to start on our knees. As you can see, left hand and left knee together, and you lift up your left hand, reach forward, and the right knee comes to meet the right hand. So one side of your body always stays short, while the other side stays long. And take your time with this motion, and you're going to reverse the motion, going backwards. Sometimes going backwards can actually help you to master it forwards as well. Make sure your hands are always pointed forward, on the palms, the flats of your hands, toes turned backwards. So another variation of the crawl is a puppet crawl where the same side of your body goes at the same side. And as before, we're going to practice it on our knees first. And you want to really practice shifting the weight from side to side and in a controlled manner. So you're not rushing or trying to scuffle across the floor. Your weight goes onto your left and then your weight goes onto the right. And then you reverse this backwards, really test your coordination, your timing, pivot through your hands and back to the start. So now we're going to cat crawl again, but this time on our toes. So your shins parallel to the floor, and just like before, you have one side short and one side long. So left knee comes to left elbow, and then the left hand reaches forward, and your right knee comes to your right elbow. And you reverse this. And it's alright for your knees to come to the outside of your elbows as you do this motion, trying to keep the hips and shoulders completely parallel to the floor. And just like before, on the same side, the puppet motion, left side goes forward, right side goes forward, left side goes forward on the tips of your toes. And just feel that balance as you lift off one side, the weight has to commit to being on the other side. It's balanced and then it comes back to the other side again. And we're going to reverse this as controlled as possible. Hands always facing forward, hips and shoulders parallel. Now we're going to get into a camel crawl. You're going to lift your hips, straighten the legs, stretching out the hamstrings, leading with the shoulders. Just like the cat crawl, same motion of one side short, one side long. And you're going to walk like a camel, leading from the hips, lifting the hips as high as you can, and enjoy being upside down. This is great training to build up to walking on your hands. So now you're going to channel the spirit of a frog with these frog hops. So hands flat on the floor, and then you reach your feet to the sides, to the outsides of your elbows, knees pointing outwards. Then we're going to reverse it backwards so the weight comes from the hands, reach with the backs of the feet, find the floor, and then move the hands back. Frog hop. Bunny hop. So similar to the frog hop, but this time your knees are going to come inside your elbows and try and get your feet right up in between your hands if you can. If it doesn't make it that far, that's fine. Just get them to where you can get them to. Just making sure you stay on the flats of your hands, never on the thumbs or the fingertips, and backwards. So now we're going to start to bring the spine a bit more into it with these side hops, two by two. So the hands go down, lift the feet up, and the feet move, move you forward. And you just focus on doing the one side first, traveling to the right, and you can do small motions, or you can do really big motions and get the hips really high like in camel. Just to make sure we stay balanced in the body, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, demonstrating here you can really lift up high or you can stay low feel free to play with it find out where you're at find your limits of this movement how high can you get your bum up really start to help you with the handstand the higher you can get it some of you might remember this from childhood again 
Anyone play crab soccer, crab football? It's a crab walk. So on the heels of the feet and the palms of the hands, just walking forwards, walking backwards, keeping the bum lifted from the floor, not dragging along. More tiring than it looks. This one I call four by two. You're gonna take four steps forward with the hands and then two deep steps with the feet. So four steps forward with the hands. Try and get the body really planked out as far as possible and then in with the feet. This really builds good balance and coordination. Uh, and then we're gonna reverse it going backwards. Shoot the feet back, walk the hands up to meet. This builds good strength through the body in all different positions of the press up. Now you're going to open up a bit and have some fun, trying to crawl as fast as you can in whatever method comes to you naturally, running in the crawl. You'll notice that your body might prefer one side over the other, so we're just going to balance this out and do it both ways. But just a chance for you to have some fun and find out what your body wants to do naturally when you put a bit more speed into it. And as you adapt the training methods, this will become much easier and faster and smoother. And continuing the theme of fun and movements, we're going to do some cartwheels. This is a great exercise, but of course, once someone can backflip, People stop thinking cartwheels are cool, and it's not about being cool, of course. It's about your body spinning, being coordinated, understanding where your weight is at all times, getting the hips over the head, getting the feet straight, and trying to land balanced in between each one. If cartwheels are too hard for you at this stage, feel free to just pivot and spin. So two hands down, spin the feet over and round, finish in a squat position. And once again, we're gonna do this both ways. Even if you can do cartwheels though, this is a good thing to practice landing in squat, and staying controlled, composed. Just to cool down and keep on spinning. Here we're going to do some teddy bear rolls. Three one way, back to three the other way. Stretch out the hamstrings. Again, coordination, massages the back. And it's a lot of fun. Once you finish the workout, before you relax, time to sit in hero pose. If you can find this comfortable for you, if not, you could put a pillow under your bum something to make it easier but it's a really good pose just to finish open up the knees the quads massages the backs of the calves opens up the ankles after you've just been getting really deep into them with some crawling motions that's it for the floor lower body workout don't forget to thank the earth thank your body thank your mind thank your breath i hope you enjoy connecting with the floor and experiencing life on all fours a good workout to pair it with is a stair lower body workout. I'd wait two to three days before doing this one again, but play with some of the motions in your own time if you wish. Thanks and see you soon.